Hello, welcome back to Learn to Code Minecraft Plugins. In today's episode, we are going to complete our first plugin. We're going to pick up where we left off last time. Let's start by adding a couple of functions to our main class. In Java, a function is a block of code that is callable. When something is called, it is being requested to be run by a program. The bucket API calls a function from our plugin when it loads and stops. These functions are required for your plugin to work. The first function we are going to add is the onEnable function. When you create a function in Java, the naming convention is as follows. The first word is lowercase, and each word after this should start with an uppercase letter and contain no spaces. This naming convention is called camel case. The parentheses signify that we have created a function. This function is called by the server when the plugin is loaded. Try to ignore the IntelliSense for now while I explain things. Just like a class, a function contains a body. The body is contained inside of the braces for the function. All functions must contain a body. We are not finished defining this function yet, we need to talk about access modifiers. Right now, our function is considered to have the default modifier because we have not specified one. The default modifier means the function can be called by any class in the same package. For example, if I made a class in the package first plugin, I would be able to access my function with the default modifier. But if I moved that class to the dev McLovin package, then I would no longer have access to the function. Before going on, I want to tell you what a subclass is. A subclass inherits fields from another class. The sub or child class inherits from the parent class. For example, the Java plugin class is the parent class to our main class because our main class extends Java plugin. So our main class is a subclass. I'm going to add a chart on screen to help you follow what I am saying. The next type of access modifier is the public modifier. The public modifier means it can be accessed from anywhere, there are no restrictions. The protected modifier means almost the same thing as the default modifier, except that a protected field can be accessed by a subclass of that class. The final modifier is the private modifier. This means the field can only be accessed by the class it is defined in. It is inaccessible from any external classes. Now that you understand access modifiers, let's add one to our onEnable function. The access modifier we are going to be adding is public. This is because the server needs to be able to run this function, and the server is an entirely different entity in an entirely different package. The next thing we need to add to our function is a data type. Data types tell you what type of information is being stored. We will talk more about data types in the future. When a function doesn't return a data type, we call these functions void. The onEnable function is one of those functions that doesn't return any value. Let's make our function void. The last thing we need to do to make our function callable by the bucket API is override it. When you override a function, you are replacing a function from the parent class. The Java plugin class contains the onEnable function already, and since our main class inherits or extends the Java plugin class, our main class already has an onEnable function. So we need to tell the computer to ignore that one and run ours instead. To do this, we need to create an annotation. Annotations associate information with fields. The information we are associating with our onEnable function is the fact that it overrides a function from a subclass. So to annotate, we type an at symbol followed by the annotation. We will talk more in depth about annotations in a future video. Now we do the exact same thing except for the onDisable function. You can type it out, but there is actually a faster way to override a function. You can use the shortcut alt insert and select override methods or go to code override methods. Since our main class inherits from the Java plugin class, we will see a list of functions from the Java plugin class. If we select on disable, the function will be generated for us. You will see a line that says super dot on disable. We will talk about that another time for now, just delete it. Our main class is now finished. We do not need to add anything else to this class to have a properly functioning plugin. But there is one more thing we need to do before we can compile our plugin. We need to create a plugin.yml file. This tells Bucket basic information about our plugin, essentially the instructions for your plugin. 
we are going to create our plugin.yml in the source folder. To create a file, right click and select new file. We will talk more about what YML files are in a future video, but for right now think of them as a text file. IntelliJ is pretty smart and already knows what fields we need to add in here, but ignore the prompt and I will explain what we need. The first thing we are going to add to this file is the location of our main class. We can tell Bucket where our plugin is by specifying the package which contains our main class. The name of this field is main. Remember how I said packages were like directories with the period as the file separator? This is where that comes into play. Type out the package as normal, then add a period, followed by the name of your main class, making sure to type the proper casing. The second field we are going to add is name. This is the name of your plugin that will be found in the plugin list. The third field is going to be the version of your plugin. Typically versions are written as three numbers separated by periods. The first number is the major number. This number only changes if the update was a large change, like a complete rewrite or shift in direction. The second number is the minor number. This number is changed when a significant update is released. The third number is the patch. If you need to make a small fix or tweak, you will increment this number for each release. With that said, I'm going to make this version 0.0.1. The final field we need to add is the API version. This lets the server know what minimum version of Bucket is required for the plugin to run. The minimum version supported is 1.13 and for most plugins you can put 1.13 as this lets your plugin be run on any server from 1.13 to the present version. Let's say you wanted to use an API feature that was introduced in 1.17. You need to set this version as 1.17 to prevent errors from your plugin running on lower version servers. I'm going to set this to 1.13 since there is no code in our project, hence no requirements. We are done! Now we just need to compile our plugin. This part is really simple. Go to your project structure and select artifacts under project settings. An artifact is an assembly of your project. To create a new artifact, click on the plus button, then go to jar and select from module with dependencies. Make sure your project is selected and press OK. You can click on the folder icon to change the output directory. For now, we will save it to the desktop. I'm going to select include in project build and I will explain what this does shortly. Click apply and close the window. To build your project, select build, then build artifacts. Hover over the artifact you just created and select build. If you check the include in project build box, you can alternatively click the green hammer on the top right of the screen or select build, build project or my preference, use the shortcut control F9. After performing one of these steps, you should see your project on the desktop. Now we need a server to test our plugin on. Create a folder which will contain your server. Copy your implementation of Bucket into this folder. I am using Craft Bucket. Then you want to create a new text document and paste in the following script. You can copy this script from the description. You can change where it says Craft Bucket 1.16.5 to whatever version you have. If you're using Spigot, you can change this to Spigot. Just make sure the name right here is identical to whatever you named your jar file. Save the script as a batch file by going to File, Save As, then change Save As Type to All Files, and change the extension to .bat and save the file. Run the script by double clicking the file. The window should close automatically and generate a file. Open the eula.txt file and change this value to true and save the file. Then start up the server and this time it should load completely. After the server is finished loading, you want to type stop into the console and press enter. The server should shut down and you can now put your plugin into the plugins folder and then start the server up once more. If you look in the console, you can see a message saying our plugin was enabled. If you type slash plugins, you should see your name of the plugin in the list and this name is from our plugin.yml. Congratulations! You made your first plugin. This is a huge milestone and it only gets more fun from here. That was probably the most boring part of this series, getting started. Next time we will make a real plugin that actually performs a function. Before you go, if you have any issues and you want to get some help, you can head on over to my Discord. There are a bunch of like-minded individuals over there who would be willing to help you. You can find a link in the description.
That is all for today, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.